Well, you've been hearing the what happened in the instruments, how does the sound get to you, and what happens in your ears. The orchestra is here to help us find out. And Mr. Watkins is in charge of the experiments. Sam's here to assist him. What even Mr. Watkins and Sam can't make visible will be shown on the screen above him. And there's a group here to see that we don't pull any fast ones. We'll begin with something very simple, a tuning fork. I can feel the prongs moving to and fro, vibrating. V for vibration, and the vibrations make the paper letter dance. Making sound is a matter of vibrating. Come on then, children. Sound is vibration. And what caused the vibration? Blowing. 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 You aren't very sure about that one. Let's look at the instruments again. First, the kettle drum. On the screen, focus, please. Right. What happens? At the top, you see the skin vibrating. Below, the air is vibrating too. Strings vibrate. The vibrations go to the body. It's a box of air. Now, blowing. The instrument doesn't vibrate much. And the idea isn't to blow air through it, but to make the air inside vibrate. This block of air actually creates the notes we hear. So your letters danced on the drum skin and the strings, but not on the wind instrument. Off you go. Now for the next step. How do the vibrations over there reach my ears here? Let's try an experiment. Could we have your gong, please, Mr. Wilson? Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Now they're going to put the bell jar over the gong and pump all the air out. Sorry. <laughs> all set now. Everything airtight. A pump to remove the air inside the bell jar and a pointer to show when the air has gone. And now, off we go.
no air now. You see? No air, no sound. They're going to let the air in again. Pretty obvious that the air has something to do with sound getting to us. But how? I expect you all know that air is made up of lots of tiny separate particles, too small to be seen. On our screen here, they are represented by tiny balls. Suppose we could catch a few air particles and make them as big as this. See how they bounce. Now we want a row of them. Our model gong starts to vibrate. Bump. The ball is bounced forward. Bump. and so on. Of course, the gong doesn't stay bulged, and air particles always bounce apart again. After the bump, we get gap. 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 And so on. As long as the gong vibrates, we get Bump, gap, bump, gap, continuously. This is how sound waves are produced. Each particle only moves to and fro, but the sound wave is traveling on and on. Ah, that makes the wave clearer. Of course, air particles aren't really in tidy rows. They're everywhere, and the sound waves travel through them at well over 700 miles an hour. This will give you an idea of it. See that flash in the distance? How quickly the thunder reaches you. just to remind us how quickly sound travels. Now, the instruments vibrate and cause air particles to cannon into each other so that sound waves pass through the air to our ears. But what then? This is where David comes in. He's going to lend us his ear. This one, David? See how the ear is shaped like a trumpet to collect the sound waves. Now, let's go into David's ear on the screen. Sound waves make the eardrum vibrate. If we could look through it, we'd see the middle ear. The eardrum at the left there moves the bones which carry the vibrations to the wall on the right, and so to the inner ear behind. They go through it and make that round thing below move. It's a membrane. But it's the inner ear that matters. It's coiled like a shell and full of liquid. The vibrations affect tiny nerves and set up currents which go to the brain.
the lights in the model head here show these currents arriving. So this is how it works. Moving air particles, vibrations in the ear, nerve currents. These go to the brain, and so we hear. You heard that music because the instruments were vibrating and air carried the sound waves to you. But how are the various instruments made to vibrate? Banging makes to and fro vibrations in all the percussion instruments. Now, what about Boeing? The bow is made of strands of horsehair. They grip and release the string continuously, so making it vibrate. Blowing. Let's see, on our screen, what wind instruments do. Wind instruments? Here you've got one. Wind swirling at a chimney top, slowed down, of course. The wind pushes and pulls the block of air inside, making it vibrate. Shorter, longer, shorter, longer, creating the sounds we hear. can set a block of air vibrating, but without a block of air, in all the other woodwinds, there are reeds in the mouthpieces to set the blocks of air into vibration. But as with the flute, no block of air, no music. Those noises are suppressed by the more powerful notes of the instruments. The flute, and the reeds. In the brass, there's much the same idea. Be heard. This is where you can blow a raspberry for us. Fine. And that's how you blow your bugle? Good, let's hear a note on it. Thank you, Peter. All the brass players sound their instruments like that by a sort of raspberry. Vibrations of the lips and the use of the tongue. And now, the players will put all these variations together for a moment. Party, party, party. Now, what makes that difference? Let's look at Tom's trick. Long lengths, low notes, high notes. Some of the instruments have a separate length for each note. Different lengths of metal. different lengths of string here. But you can use one string for many notes. 
the vibrating part stops at the finger. Oh yes, Peter again. Peter, now we'll look at wind instruments. It's the same again. The shorter the pipe, the higher the note. But you needn't have a separate pipe for every note. This one will do. Close all the holes. The entire length vibrates and the pipe sounds its lowest note. But uncover the holes one by one and the vibrating length gets shorter and shorter. The working part ends at the open hole nearest the mouthpiece. The rest of the pipe no longer matters, the note remains the same. The wind instruments of the orchestra work on the same idea. The woodwinds have keys to cover the holes. The brass have no holes. They change the length by means of extra coils. There is, altogether, 14 feet of tubing here. If it were straightened out... Look! <laughs> 14 feet here, and... 14 feet here. The trombone has a slide for changing length. And again, it's all neatly bent for convenience. You see? Aha. Different notes on the same length. That got you guessing. The slide doesn't move. Yes. This is still another way. Let me show you. You see, the tube isn't changed. But the air inside is made to split into equal sections. Two parts, three parts, four parts, and so on. The player tightens his lips when splitting the air to get the higher notes. In the old days, those were the only notes the brass instruments could play, and there were gaps in the scale. Now, with keys and coils, length changes can be made which give the missing notes throughout the musical range. Talking of range, let's look at the range of an orchestra. A full symphony orchestra has a range of pitch of about seven octaves. Most instruments only play about three of these octaves. But the harp covers the whole lot, except for the very lowest. We need a double bassoon for these. And the very highest, which only a piccolo can play. <laughs> 